Hi guys, hope you had a good weekend and uh, you're taking your test today. I, the night class is always funny to kind of keep track of, but um, this I want you to watch this video after your test. There's nothing, there's not gonna be any assignments on it, but we can get started into our next material because it's, we should get about two days worth of material in today. So you'll take your test and then you'll get started on this. Um, first off, let me say, um, I, it's setting in now. I'm, I'm missing you guys. I wish I was at the school. I know you guys wish, I'm sure you were at the school, but uh, you know we're, we're making progress. We're getting through it. You guys are doing awesome. And uh, hopefully you know, we'll get, get through these next few weeks. We'll be ready to, to go on. And, and I know some of you guys are getting close to graduation, so just keep at it. Realize, hey, this, you're going to get through this. And uh, I just wanted to say that at the outset. We're going to look at functions, and whenever I see that word, my brain goes to my uh, middle school years where uh, cartoons, the conjunction, junction, what's your function? Uh, but this, this is a math term of functions, okay? I think that video was about, like, grammar, which I don't know why I was so into it, because I hate grammar and spelling, but uh, maybe it scarred me, maybe just that song, I don't know. I enjoyed it, though. But... Uh, this is the math term for functions, and we're gonna work on that word as far as what we're looking at next. And it's gonna be fun, right? It's functions, so it's gonna be fun. I know you guys are, are just so excited about new math material. But uh, basically, when we're talking about functions in math, we have to uh, really look at, okay, what, what are we doing? And I always try to remind us, why are we doing it? You know, what it, it, it's gonna, part of this is gonna seem like so math, just in our own little world but i always want to point out hey there's a reason why we do this and build into this especially if you go on uh, i had a student you know uh didn't get to take algebra to, only needed one credit took a different class then took co college algebra and, and it can if you don't know these terms and get into that math world it can be really hard so hopefully we get the just the intro in and that you can kind of see these terms and work with them First off with a function is we're going to work with, we have an input and an output, and we're going to come up with different names for that as we go on. But input and output is how I like to look at it and think about it. Meaning if I put something in, I'm going to get something out, okay? If I put, you know, whatever I put in is going to determine what I get out. I think of vending machines when I think about functions. You know, if I go and put 50 cents in, I'm going to get this out. But if I go put a dollar in, I'm going to maybe get something different out or so on. Or maybe there's, you know. And so I think about what you're gonna put in so you're gonna get something out. And so far, you know, we worked with um, equations, but really those equations that you just got done testing only have one letter in them. Uh, now, it may have the same letter on two sides, but it was the same letter. So you may have three X plus two equals four X plus seven or something, but they were both X's. Now we're really gonna get into that you're gonna have two different letters. And, and for functions, we really stick with X and Y, okay? Uh, you don't have to, but for most of our work and what we're gonna be looking at, we're gonna be stick, sticking with those two letters. And because of that, especially when we put it on a graph, we're gonna have X's and Y's on our graph, and the X is gonna be the input, okay? And the Y is always gonna be, for our case, the output. So we can also look at it as an X and Y, okay? And so I put, an, I put an equation up here, and I'm going to talk about, okay, if we put something in, we're going to get something out. And so I want to make this little chart here to keep track of, well, when I put a certain x in, what am I getting out for y? Okay, well, let's start with a negative 1. Let's say I put a negative 1 in for x, what do I get out for y? So let's do that. Let's put negative 1 in for x, okay, I plug it in. Okay, and what do I get out for y? Well, if I do this problem, negative 1 plus 3, I get out 2 for y. So if I put in negative 1 for x, I get out 2 for y. Okay, I put in this, I got out that. Okay, that's what a function is. Well, let's say I put in, instead of a negative 1, let's say I put in a 0 for x. Which 0 is a number, I can put that in. So now I'm going to get a different output. I put in 0. Now I'm going to get out 3. 0 plus 3 is 3. One more. Let's say I put in a positive 1. 
for x. So that means I get out a 4 for y. 1 plus 3 is 4. So this shows the chart of what I put in for x, I get out for y. And that's going to be what we really focus on. You're going to be putting in things and then seeing what you get out. Now, this is called a linear function, okay? Linear is just kind of, a, in our terms, I mean, I'm sure there's a more official, but uh, it's just kind of a fancy thing to, that I'm going to describe as just on a line, okay? Linear, you can remember the word line. In fact, we're just going to do that, okay? Even though it's not line function. But it's just a line, a straight line, something that you can predict. If you are watching a straight line, Okay, and you know it's straight and it's going straight, you can predict it's going to be up here in a moment, or you can predict it's going to be down here. Okay, you can predict where it's going. Same thing if it was going down. Okay, you can predict where it's going to end up. And so we're going to see that these are linear functions, meaning as I, if you notice, as I, dec as I increased by one, my output was increasing by one. That's not always going to be the case. Some of them will be different that way, but it's going to be a pattern. You're going to see the patterns as you go on. Okay, now, uh, one way to see that is on a graph, okay? So let me make a little graph here, and I would suggest if you can get out, uh, I know right now it's going to be, uh, that may be an issue, but I mean, um, you know, if, if but you, you don't have to, but if you want to get some graph paper, it would help probably, um, but I do want to highly suggest, if you do, don't get out if you don't need to. Or even just for this, okay? I should say that. I want to be careful. Um, just, you know, if you get, you don't need it, you don't have to have it, but if you have some, let me put it that way. If you have some graph paper just laying around the house, use that. Um, you know, don't, uh, I would not go to Walmart or something for that. But, um, but, and you can also, what you, I tell you what you could do, uh, if you, you could uh, Google like practice graph paper. And then print that. Now, there we go. We just solved. I just solved an issue right here from my home. Uh, that's that's um, you know uh, free. I give you that for free. But basically, okay. So let's put this though on a graph and talk about why it's a line a linear function. Now, the thing about hand drawn graph is going to be slightly a little off just because I didn't get the perfect spaces in between them. But you'll see what I'm talking about. If I was to graph these points as an x and a y, which is what a graph is, you got an x-axis and you got a y-axis, okay? And we talk about input, output, but let me do this as an x and y and put it on a graph, and you're going to see that it's a line. So this first one, negative 1, 2, right? That's negative 1 for the x, 2 for y. So if I go negative 1 and then go up 2, that spot is right there, okay? Negative 1, positive 2. And then 0, 3. Okay, 0 means I stay here. I don't go left or right. 0 is my x, and I go up 3. Okay, 1, 2, 3. And then my last point is 1, 4. Okay, 1, 4. I go 1, positive 1, and then up 4. And you're seeing I've got a line forming. Okay, I've got this line forming. And you can continue that on. Like if I later did negative 2, if I plug in negative 2, I would get negative 1. So negative 2 is going to be here at negative 1. It's going to be on this line here. Okay. If I plugged in 2 for x, I'm going to get 5 for y. So 2, 5 would be up here on this line. It's going to keep going in that direction. You're going to keep having that straight line. That's what this represents. Input, output. It's a linear function. Some of the lines are going to go down, some are going to be down here in the negative, you know, but they're going to follow that pattern, they're going to be on the input and output, okay? All right, so we're getting into the, I'm just trying to give out the basic terms here. We have an input, output. Another way to call input and output in math terms is domain and range. Domain being the input, range being the output. Now, that's going to be the more official name than input-output. When uh, you do math problems in higher math, they're going to talk about domain and range. But it's the input is the domain, range is the output. Okay. Now, one thing that on a linear function that we need to address here, and this will be where I kind of end, because I know you took your test. I want you to take your time. I want to make sure you 
got enough time for that. That's the most important thing about today's. But I wanted to get this started so that we can move into our problems. But uh, one thing about domain and range, and I'll, I'll put my problem back up here, is I cannot put in one thing. So like, let's use two as my example. I can't put in a two for X, okay? And get out two different outputs or get two different ranges. Otherwise, it's not a linear function at that point. Okay, it can't be a it can't be a function in this case. Okay, if I put in two, I'm gonna get out five. There's no other thing that I'm gonna get out. I can't put in two and get a five and then somehow put in two and get like a, a, a seven. Okay, that can't happen. If you plug in the same thing, okay, if you plug it in. You're only going to get one output. Okay, you can't get two different ranges. You can't get two different outputs at that point. Otherwise, it's not a function. Okay. Now, one thing though is I can put in two different things. So this is where it gets confusing. I can't. You may want to write down. Can't what? Well, can't put in one domain and get two ranges, two different ranges. So I can't, and if you keep that as an example, I can't put in a two and get out a five and a seven, okay? So it's only gonna be a five, there's only gonna be one thing. But what you can do is you can put in two different things Now, I'm not talking about this one, okay? Two different things and get the same range. Just so you know, the difference is this one I'm putting in one and getting two ranges, that can't happen. But here, you can put in two and get out the same thing. That would be not on this function, but on this one x squared equals y. Okay, x squared equals y. I could put in 2, so I could put in a 2, okay, and I get out what? 4. 2 squared is 4. But I could also put in negative 2, put in negative 2 and square it, you also get 4. So even though I put in two different things, I put in a 2, I put in a negative 2, as you can see, I got the same answer. That can happen. You can put in two different things and get the same answer, but you can't put in one thing and get two different answers, okay? I want to make sure that that, that shows that. Uh, we'll go through that a little bit deeper, but I want to start there. This is where I want to kind of start. Get used to those terms, input, output, domain range. Maybe create a couple different ones. You could, you could do all that. You, just make sure you put your x over here and your y over here but maybe you do like x minus two or something and then plug in different x's and see what you get out for y just kind of get a feel for that um you know and see what happens you could you don't have to do subtract you could do like three x equals something okay and then plug in different ones for that that's going to be something where you don't decrease by one you know if i put in a one i get a three if i put in a two i get a six but it's going to be a pattern you know it's going to be a pattern they're going to go by threes at that point okay that gives you a little bit of what that is. And then picking up on Thursday, we'll build from there and start getting into our problems with that, okay? Good luck on the test. Hope you did well. Hope you had a good week and we'll see you in a bit.